Hello everyone, welcome back to Good Enough Counselors and Therapists. And today what I wanted to talk about is about some of the mistakes that I've made in private practice. And I wanted to share this because I think what can happen is often we can feel very frightened about what's going to happen if we make a mistake. And uh, we can feel so frightened that it means that we never get started. Um, and so what I wanted to do was to share how one counsellor has um, made mistakes in her private practice and has survived them. And the reason I'm talking about this is often when we're talking to other counsellors and we're looking at their businesses, we only see the good stuff. We only see the things that are um, working well for them. We look at them and we think that they're doing so well and we think that we possibly um, couldn't do the same task, we couldn't do as well as them. So what I wanted to do today was in a sense to try and normalise the fact that we're all human and that we are going to make mistakes. And alongside that I'd really like to encourage you because I know there's people out there who are thinking about starting a private practice, but are feeling too anxious about it, or perhaps um, have a small private practice and want to grow it, but don't really believe in their ability to be able to do so. And so I really hope you'll find this um, feed encouraging to you. So one of the first things I'd like to share is that when I started private practice, I'd been putting it off for a long time because I couldn't work out how to get started. And I was in one of those situations where um, I, I, I just didn't know how to start. And eventually I met someone who had a room available that she was looking to let out to a counsellor. And so we arranged that I would pay her, it was £25 for a day's rent each week. And the best piece of advice that I think I've ever had from someone about private practice is she said, don't expect to make a profit straight away, expect to make a small loss. So that really helped me when I set myself up and I had those first few anxious um, weeks where I was waiting to get a client. Um, and in fact, I was very lucky I didn't make a loss. I did get enough clients to cover my costs, but um, it was really helpful to have that piece of advice. And so what happened is I started working with clients and at that stage in my life, I had um, several younger children. My life was really busy. I was doing other work and I was running two placements alongside my private practice because I didn't really have enough clients then. I wanted to carry on getting hours. So I carried on doing my placements. Um, I had another job as well that I was doing and I had a young family. So my life was quite busy. Um, and I'm sure that's the same for many of you who are thinking about private practice. You're probably running it alongside other things that you're doing. Um, and so I didn't really, if I'm honest, give a great deal of attention to some of the nuts and bolts of my practice. As far as I was concerned, the most important thing was I needed to get clients to be able to pay the rent. Um, I wanted to work well with the clients. Um, and that was what was uppermost in my mind. Um, and what I wasn't very good at was the paperwork side of things. Um, so I think I had a, a notebook and I kept all my client notes all in the same notebook. Um, they weren't separated out per client. So all the notes were all in, in one notebook, I think, looking back on it. And I can't even remember where I kept the notebook or what I did. But this is all relevant, as you'll hear. Because then what happened was um, a few months into my private practice, I was contacted by a charity who were looking to provide some counselling for one of the people who they were trying to support in their charitable work. And I was very happy to accept the referral. It was something that I knew something about. And I very soon began to work with this particular client. Now, the charity had sent me some paperwork alongside that. And it was things like the client's name and address and referral information. I'm not sure it was anything um, very confidential. I think it was mainly the personal details of the client. 
Um, and what happened was that I didn't at that point have a system for dealing with referrals. I didn't really have a system for dealing with my notes either, because up until that time, I'd been the placement, notes were stored at the placement, and I hadn't really done anything about what I was going to do with my own private practice. And so what happened was that I actually left the paperwork out on my kitchen table. And at some point, I picked up that paperwork by accident and threw it away in the bin. I didn't shred it. I didn't do anything with it. It just ended up in recycling. Um, I think that's where it ended up. I, to this day, I don't know where it went. I lost it. Um, and you can imagine what I felt like when I realized that I'd lost this paperwork. I just felt absolutely terrible and I was so worried um, and just didn't know what, what I could do because I knew that I'd really let my client down because I'd lost her personal details. Um, so after a lot of very frantic searching, as you can imagine, um, eventually I thought, well, I've got to do something about this. I can't in all honesty um, just leave it. I think I'm going to have to do something about it. I'm not really quite sure what to do. And I think at that point, my supervisor must have been away on holiday because what I ended up doing was ended up phoning um, the lady who was my sort of placement manager come supervisor at one of my placements. She was an experienced counsellor and I thought, I'm gonna, I need to talk to somebody and in lieu of my supervisor not being around, I'm going to talk to her. So we had a conversation about what I could do and she said to me afterwards, she said, I have never heard you sound like that because I was so upset with myself as you can imagine. Um, and what we decided to do in the end um, when we discussed it, as she said to me, she said, if you try and cover it up, she said, it's always going to be there on your conscience and it, are you prepared to live with yourself if you don't do anything about it? And for me, certainly, authentically, I didn't really feel that that was, um, that was right for me. It didn't feel right. And I felt that what I needed to do was I needed to let the client know um, and that it was important to be really honest and open with her and to live with the consequences, whatever they were, because it was my mistake. Um, so what I decided to do in the end was um, I contacted the charity and the person who'd made the referral to me because um, what I thought was that I didn't want to put the client in a position where she had to say, I'm not prepared to work with you because you've lost my material. And I wanted to give that client an opportunity to make a decision without feeling under pressure to please me. And so after explaining it to the um, manager of the charity, which you can imagine wasn't an easy thing to do, um, they then spoke to the client. Um, and the client, in actual fact, decided that we'd started on the work together. They weren't all that worried about their name and address details being thrown away, and they were happy to continue to work with me. Obviously, when we then met together afterwards, we had a conversation about what had happened. Um, and I'm happy to say that this client and I continued to work together for quite some time. Um, so the moral of the story <laughs> and the reason I'm telling this is that um, mistakes do happen. And looking back, of course, what I should have done is right from the outset, I should have thought about my filing system. And believe me, the day that I lost her um, her information was the day I went out and bought myself a lockable file. Uh, but sometimes, you know, it's we make mistakes. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. Um, we're rushing around, we're doing various things, and we don't always put the right procedures in place beforehand. And that's what happened to me. I had to sort it out. I had to deal with the consequences of what happened. But the reason I'm sharing this, there's a couple of reasons. And the first one is that um, I want you to know that it, making mistakes is a normal part of our um, life and our practice. And we can do the best that we can. And I, I could have done a better job, couldn't I? I could have sorted things out right from the start. As I say, hindsight is a wonderful thing. I made that mistake and that's what we do. We do make mistakes. But the second thing I want to say is that having made the mistake, it wasn't impossible to put it right. Okay, the client 
might have felt really let down by me. The client may not have decided to come back to me. I don't know, but I think because I did act authentically and I did try to put it right, I think people are often much more willing to acknowledge that we're human and that we make mistakes than we're prepared to give people credit for. And so the reason I really wanted to share this with you is because I know it's a big fear that we have. What will happen if? What if I make a mistake? And I think that's, it is quite a bad mistake to make in a way, isn't it? To lose a client's information, you know, not to keep the client's stuff safe, to actually have to tell the client that that's what's happened. Now, other mistakes I've made, and, and I wouldn't say it's just one mistake, but when I've been in, in counselling with people, um, you know, I've perhaps said things or done things. Um, I've had clients who found that I've been too blunt with them. Um, you know, I've said things and perhaps it's been really difficult for them to hear what I've said. You know, and um, and that's led to a rupture in the relationship. And sometimes I think I'm probably one of those counsellors that you hear about where people say, well, how could a counsellor possibly have said that? You know, there's often that um, you take a risk and I've taken risks in therapy where I've said things and the risks actually it hasn't worked out. Sometimes it has, sometimes it hasn't. You know, I've done too deep a challenge. These are all sorts of things that can happen. And I have to live with it. I have to live with those mistakes that I've made. But I think the important thing is, is that I'm still reaching out to people. I am still making a difference in people's lives. Um, I cannot be perfect. And I think this is what is so important to say, is we can't embark on this road of counselling we can't do it and expect it to go right every single time. We are going to make mistakes. We will do things that are wrong. And all we can do is to be open to putting that mistake right when we make it. And the problem is, is that we allow this anxiety, this fear of making mistakes to hold us back. And it stops us from being able to put ourselves out there in the world. And what I'd really like to encourage you with is that this is normal. <laughs> you know, if you're thinking you can't do it because you're going to make a mistake, I hate to say it, but that means you, you can never do it because, yes, you will make a mistake. And the important thing about it is not to um, hold those mistakes up, not to continually castigate though, yourself for those mistakes, to try and put them right, but also to look at what you can do to ensure that mistake doesn't happen again, to see if you can do more training, to address it in supervision, to do all the things that will help us to be better practitioners, but also to recognize that it's important to look forward. It's important to carry on trying. It's important to allow ourselves to be vulnerable. As Brené Brown says, people don't want you to get into the arena bulletproof and perfect. They actually need you to come out there in all your imperfection and to get out there and do the work. Because if we waited to be perfect, nothing would ever happen. It's so, so important for us to get out there, even though it means we might make mistakes. And what we can do with those mistakes is to reframe them, to see them as learning opportunities, as ways to help us to grow. Obviously, we don't want to hurt clients. We don't want to damage the therapeutic relationship. And we have to do everything we can not to let, allow that to happen, but also to forgive ourselves when we do and to recognise that we are in that moment doing the best job that we can. That's so important. And that we speak out what we know to be true in that moment, whatever the consequences.
So I hope that encourages you. Please do um, leave some comments if you'd like about that, whatever you think. You may never want to speak to me again because I've told you about those mistakes I've made, but I don't believe that's true. I hope this encourages you. And if you're thinking about growing your private practice and you would like some coaching to help you and to help you get over some of these feelings of not being good enough to do it, then please do speak to me. That's what I'm here for. And I hope that by sharing my vulnerabilities, by getting out there and showing you that it is possible to be vulnerable, to make mistakes and to survive, that you'll find me someone who can encourage you and help you in your journey as you seek to grow and to develop and to achieve those dreams that you've got of a successful business. Okay, thanks so much. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.